Hey, Wayne the voiceover goalie here. My channel is all about bringing you awesome goalie content, so if you've liked, subscribed, or commented on one of my videos, you are totally awesome. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Welcome to today's live stream. I am super excited that you're here today. I'm a little more amped up for me because, uh, I don't know, it's, it's what, like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, my time on the East Coast. It's uh, St. Patrick's Day. Usually in the Boston area, it is a big deal. Um, but unfortunately this year, due to circumstances around the world, it's a little bit it's a little bit more tame. But regardless, I am super excited that you're here, that you're spending some time with me, that you just want to hang out, talk goalie stuff. Um, and today is day number today is day number five of my daily goalie live streams. And I can't believe that I've kept this going for so long. If you are um, if you're new to the stream, welcome. I'm super glad. I'm super excited that you're here. Um, one of the best, I know a lot of you have missed the streams because I've been doing them at various times during the day to try to get as many people live and in person hanging out with me, whether you are in North America, the US or Canada, over my European friends, um, or around the world, or you know, you're even as far away as Australia. I know I have a bunch of people in Australia and New Zealand who watch this channel. I am just super excited you're here. I want to do as many of these at various times so that everyone can participate. So the best way to ensure that you don't miss a live stream is to subscribe and click that notifications bell so you know an hour or two before I go live that you can catch the stream. So welcome today. I'm going to jump into it. Today's topic is in honor of St. Patrick's Day, we're going to talk about puck luck and our goalies lucky. And hopefully by the end of my little um, opening spiel, uh, I will change your mind as to why I think that we need to eliminate the idea that goalies are lucky in our game to benefit us as goalies. So if you have a question or comment uh, pertaining to today's topic, drop it in the chat. Use hashtag lucky at the beginning so that I know right off the bat that you're talking about the, um, the topic at hand today. So let's talk about luck. Let's talk about puck luck, right? We've all, if you've been playing the game for any amount of time, We've all heard, oh, a player say to us, hey, man, that was a really lucky save. Oh, great job. That was a lucky save. Or someone tries to score on us, we make the save, and you're like, oh, you got lucky. Um, and really, when we look down deep into it, right, are we really lucky? Or, you know, do we have some kind of uncontrollable force that is helping us um, in our games? And now, right off the bat, I'll tell you right now that I do believe that there is some form of puck luck, right? Every team, every goalie, every player gets a bounce that goes their way. Um, sometimes you get a piece of something and the puck might dribble across the crease. Uh, and yeah, you got lucky because the dynamics, the the, phys the physics of the puck went your way that time. Um, but what I'm talking about really in today's topic is us making saves and people thinking that they are based purely on luck. Um, one of the things that I that really drives me crazy is that we have this idea that we can make saves that are totally out of our control. And when we think about saves that we make that other players consider to be lucky, we're talking about saves that come almost out of desperation, out of nowhere, that no one expects us to save or make, um, and that were probably, what, like surefire goals. And we got lucky because we got a piece of it. But the truth is, when we look at how these plays break down, and you can, if you record your games and you watch your, your game playback, especially in these, in these situations, right, um, it's really our experience and how we handle certain scenarios that put us in the right position to make those saves. And it's not about, you know, I've had plenty of glove saves where I haven't had eyes on the shot and the puck ends up in my glove. Is that lucky? Well, from my perspective, no, it's not. I was in the right position at the right time, holding my glove in the right place to make that save, right? When we look at how we play certain scenarios in hockey, whether that be uh, screen plays or uh, in close deflections, as goalies, what we're really doing is trying to maximize the percentages to go our way, right? It's impossible for us to read and react and move accordingly to every single shot at any given time in every different scenario. Sometimes you really just have to play the percentages. This is one of the reasons why the the blocking butterfly became so prevalent, right, all of a sudden, because 
the game sped up to a point where goalies weren't really able to react the same way they used to in certain scenarios. Guys, players uh, started using different sticks that allowed them to all shoot faster. Uh, there were different, um, you know, th- there was more emphasis on taking away the goalie's eyes so that they couldn't see where the shot was coming from. And in those situations, we as goalies adapted and evolved to play the percentages, drop into a, a blocking butterfly, make ourselves big in in the attempt to get in the right place at the right time. And so when we look at plays that people, players that are not in the know, that aren't goalies, think that we got lucky on something. No, it was really us developing how we want to play certain scenarios to put us in the right position at the right time to make those saves. Um, And so what's important to take away from all of this talk about being lucky, right, is that when you believe in things like luck, you're basically conceding to some force that is greater than you and that you have no control over. And as goalies, one of the biggest things that we need to do is to switch our mindset to take responsibility of our actions and not let some all-controlling force like luck predetermine whether or not we are going to have success in our game. You know, it's really about taking actionable steps that you can implement to give yourself, ultimately, the confidence that you need to go out there and stop any shot. Um, You know, people talk about things like, oh... That shot was unstoppable. You couldn't save that shot. That's one of those that's one of those shots that you shouldn't save. And in my mind, I hear those things, and it it's one of my biggest pet peeves, right? Because I think to myself, well, that's not true. We could potentially always be in pos- in the correct position in the right place at the right time to make any save. And whether or not we have the physical capabilities, the ability to read a play, um, or, you know, the reaction time to do so is a different story. But, you know, there's no, I don't think that there's anything like an unstoppable shot. Sure, there are different shots that uh, have higher scoring percentages and potential than others, right? Like a shot from the red line directly on you that you have eyes on, you have a much higher success rate in stopping that shot than... Uh, say, a cross-crease pass to an open player in the slot that has is uncovered. You know, that's a higher percentage shot. But the fact that we potentially are playing our game and going into different scenarios thinking, oh, I didn't have a chance on that, is really self-defeating, right? And I'm not saying that you need to take blame or responsibility for every goal against, but If you go into a game having the mindset that you have the ability to stop every single shot, that gives you the confidence in your play that you really need to accelerate in the position. And confidence is one of the biggest things that we all need in our everyday lives, right? Whether it's whether it's your work, job, school, whatever it is you're doing um, in goaltending, it's all about the mental game. It's all about confidence. And yes, something like luck can come in and kind of disrupt that. If you if you believe that you're a lucky person, yeah, I can see how that works in your favor. But really, when you leave something like that up to some kind of, you know, higher power with regards to whether or not you are going to save a shot, um, you're really doing yourself, in my opinion, a disservice to your game. Because I want to go in, I approach every game, every time I step on the ice, I think to myself... I can make that save. I can make. I can pitch a shutout every single game. I just need to do the right things, be in the right place, uh, and focus, and do what I need to do. Now, look, hockey, sports in general, goaltending specifically, it's it all breaks down to errors and mistakes, right? That's why people score. That's why people make certain plays. That's why um, you know. Some people have more success than others. It's about the mistakes that we make in the game. And we're all human. We all make mistakes. There's no there's no doubting that. But it's how we adapt and process those mistakes and minimize them in our game that really help us in the long run. And so I, I'm sorry if you thought you um, were coming into this live stream to talk about how uh, luck is on our side. But... The reality, the truth is you need to make your own luck, right? You need to give yourself the best chance, the best opportunity, do the things that you know are right, uh, work hard, don't cut corners, and that's the best way 
to get to get luck to be, lady luck to be on your side. So hopefully my short small rant. Um, I only wanted to keep the beginning of this like to ten or fifteen minutes. So if you're watching this in the replay, you get the value of um, having the content, talking about the topic. But you know what? I want to see what you all are saying in the chat about luck and everything else. So let's switch over here to the chat. And I know that there. Thank you so much if you joined early because I know there were a bunch of you in here early having an awesome conversation about uh, about things in general. I think that make me think, wow, people are really coming here. It's really it's really awesome to see that people are waiting. And I feel honored every time that people are in here, in the chat, in, in my stream, waiting for it to start because I just, you know, want to spend, during these during these difficult times, have, take carve some time out of my day to hang out with you, connect with you, you know, talk about something that we all love and we all miss. Um, it's day number what, like six, five, day number five without hockey? And so, yeah, we're all in the same boat. We're all feeling it together, right? So let's see who's in here. Um, and let's see who's who's saying some stuff about what the, what the topic's at. I'm just going to scroll through really, really quickly. Um, and I see a whole bunch of familiar names that, I, um, that I've seen over the last couple of days. So I'm super excited that you're here. But I also see names that I recognize that I haven't seen in the recent stream. So guys like... Um, so guys like TNT Films, what's going on, man? I recognize your name. Glad to see you here. Uh, John Litzka, I know you've been here for a couple streams, but I'm glad to see you here. Melon Gargantua, what's going on, man? How are you? It's uh, it's 7 it's seven for me. I, I guess he must be in uh, somewhere over in Europe. And so um, I'm so glad that you guys are here. Let's, uh, oh my gosh, man. You know, this chat is so is so awesome because you guys just kind of just like start flooding in and writing all these awesome things and I want to try to get to all of your um, all of your uh, questions and comments in the chat. Uh, I you know I am gonna try to cap this at probably a 30 minute live stream today. I today was honestly a big work day for me and I just came off of um, a big recording session so I'm a little bit if I'm a little low energy, it's because of that. Uh, but let's see. I got some good. I got some good comments and questions in here. Ryan, Ryan A says, "What about playing the odds? Uh, screen slap shot from the point you drop to your knees and butterfly because the odds are are going to be. Uh, it's going to be low. Yeah, and that's really what it's about, right? When we talk about when we talk about being lucky, we talk about really manipulating the percentages that we are going to be in the right place at the right time, uh, and playing the odds that anything going up high is going to hit a body in front." whether that be your teammate or one of the, you know, offensive players screening you, and that anything coming in uh, from the point in a screen has the best chance to reach you as the goalie coming in low through legs, right? And yeah, that's really what it's all about. It's about understanding those scenarios, taking a, taking a good angle when it comes to getting out in that screen. Now, it used to be, right, the mentality, the, the debate was going back and forth. A long time ago, whether it was better in those scenarios to come out to the top of your crease, get as close as you can to that screen so that you give yourself that chance to make that blocking save, or the other train of thought was stay on the goal line, try to give yourself some, you know, an opportunity to get some eyes on the puck as it was coming through the screen and uh, using your reaction time to make that save, right? But the truth is, uh, and I and I get a lot of this because you know people say you should watch the NHL to um, to model your game after. The guys in the show are doing a lot of stuff that we all should be doing to form good habits. But uh, I'm going to say something, and it's probably going to be contested by a lot of people out there. Uh, I don't think that you can necessarily always model your game after your favorite NHL or any NHL goalie playing on TV based on the level of play and the skill set that you are in and at. And by that, I mean the guys at the NHL level, anyone in pro hockey, they are elite athletes that have certain abilities and skill sets that go way above what a normal pedestrian, recreational, beer league goalie might have, right? And so how they implement different techniques, different uh, styles of play at that elite level against elite shooters 
is inherently different than how I would I would implement the same technique in uh, you know my low league beer league uh, based on the talent that I'm skating against and based on my own personal skills, right? And so for guys that have like in the NHL, I'm sure. I'm sure every NHL goalie has much faster reaction speeds than I do. And so if they were to play a certain scenario, kind of relying on their innate and natural athleticism and reaction time, uh, but I see that from, you know, the stands, and I think, oh, if that guy's doing it, I should be doing that too. That's the best way to play. That might not, necess- not, that might not necessarily be true for me personally, right, or for you or for anyone else. Because there are a bunch of different factors that we don't always aren't always obvious to us that give a certain elite player success that don't necessarily translate into our game. Now, I'm not saying that if you are a youth goalie and you are looking to develop your game to play ultimately at a high level, that you shouldn't be emulating some of these things and you shouldn't be adopting good habit and best practices. Um, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying for all of uh, us 40-something-year-old guys and girls who are out there just having looking to have fun, try to play the best game you can, uh, integrating new modern techniques that maybe we're coming back to the game after a long hiatus, that, you know, take all of the advice, all of the coaching with a grain of salt, right? Because what might be considered best practices or, you know, optimal this or that may necess- may not necessarily ever pertain to where you are in your game, in your skill level. And at the end of the night, as long as you're going out there, having a good time, getting getting some exercising, having some social interaction, which I know if you're like me, you're you're craving that right now, right? That's why you're here. Um, then you know what? It's all good. Give up some goals, make some saves, have some beers afterwards, uh, make some friends, and just enjoy the game that you love playing for the sake of playing it. Uh, I don't think anyone here is a uh, professional athlete, dare I say that, because, I don't know, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just a regular guy with a YouTube channel trying to connect with other awesome goalies out there. Um, And so, yeah, I think more than ever, when we all get back on the ice, whether that be in a few weeks or a few months, we all will probably have a better appreciation for the position, right? And in times like this, maybe what we just need to do is take a little bit of time to do some self-analy- self-analyzing, think about why we play the game, think about what it is that we want to get out of it, think about how we approach X, Y, or Z scenarios, and um, and really just get back out there and enjoy the game we love when, we are, when we're able to do so. Uh, Bryce McLaughlin, what's going on, man? He uses hashtag, hashtag lucky. Uh, I don't really think that it's real either makes me uh makes me mad when my coaches say that i made a lucky save yeah because what what they're really saying is they're invalidating your ability to stop the puck and as goalies we every save doesn't necessarily need to be right in the pocket of our glove you know it doesn't necessarily need to be off the face of our blocker and into the corner it doesn't need to be you know a pad save that we can immediately cover up um, you make a save, you make a save, right? And when people say, oh, that was a lucky save, they're really just, especially your own teammates or your coaches, they're inadvertently invalidating your ability to play the position, right? By saying that you don't know what you're doing or you shouldn't have made that save. And so, yeah, that's a good point. Um, so really, it's, it boils down to that mental game, right? Understanding how to take criticism and or... Um, and or comments like that and turn them into and turn them into a positive. Uh, Brent, Brent, oh, <laughs> it's, it's so funny. There's, you know, I, I recognize a lot of your names and I'm just looking in the chat now and Bryce McLaughlin used hashtag lucky and then literally two comments, three comments later, Brent McLaughlin uses hashtag lucky and Brent says, uh, I think that uh, saves can look lucky but there is always skill behind it. I think that lucky saves are a myth. Yeah, I, you know, I, like I just said, I tend to agree. I think there is always some skill, some reason, you know. If you go out there and you are a goalie and you are intentional in your play and you are active and instead of taking a, you know, a passive role, um, 
make decisions. It's all about making decisions when it comes to how to play certain scenarios, certain shots, certain, um, you know, players who are breaking down the wing, right? You are making a conscious decision to come out of your blue paint, take an angle, to start your retreat back to, you know, you're back to the net at a certain time, at a certain speed, um, to, you know, make you, make yourself get yourself in certain positions and so when we take away when we don't when we think that it's luck we're taking away our ability to play the game and so yeah i totally agree with you let's see um let's see if there are any other hashtags going on in here but that's so funny bryce and brent yeah right, right after the other um see speaking of speaking of brent's brent guest says uh that is true but some goals are just are better to just count as a wash than getting all worked up about how you possibly could have stopped it. Uh, the next shot is always the most important one. Yeah, that's, you know, that's another great point, right? When, when I say that I think that we can stop all shots, I don't, I don't uh, mean to say that we should get upset when a goal is scored against us and think that we should have stopped it. You know, there's a difference between things we should have done and could have done. And, I think in any scenario, we could be in the right position, um, but whether or not we uh, are and should have made a save is like a whole nother topic of discussion, right? There are, there are so many factors that go into whether or not uh, a high percentage play scores a goal, right? And that are, and there are tons of things that are out of your control. So say, for example, a two-on-one play is a much different scenario than a three-on-O, and whether or not you could save a three on O, you probably can. You have the ability to make that save, right? But when the odds are stacked against you in terms of the player's ability to score and the percentages shift in their favor, whether or not you should is a whole nother story, right? So if you have like, say for example, a three on O situation, uh, no one on your team is expecting you to make that save, right? And so when you do, it's perceived as being lucky because um, because you didn't have, you know, you weren't expected to make that save. But on the same on the same accord, right? Yeah, some luck comes into play, right? If a if on a three on zero, uh, a cross ice pass comes across and the receiving player bobbles the pass and shoots high wide to the left, um, that could be, you know. Maybe there's a little bit of luck in that, right? They, they for whatever reason, messed up on their end. But like I said, the game is all about errors and people making mistakes. And that really boils down to whether or not goals are scored and games are won. And so minimizing those is, is one of the best ways to gain the most amount of success. Um, so let's see. Oh, man. You guys are just... You guys are so awesome. I... I love seeing how all of these chats come come in and and the conversations that you you are all having on your own. And I'm sorry, I know that uh, I've said it before. I'm so bad at manipulating at at going through and and navigating the chat. And it's just because it's because of you, all of you who show up and and make these interactions so awesome. So I'm going to try to get to as many of these comments and questions as I can. Um, but the the reality is is that I am definitely going to miss some. Um, if you do have something pressing uh, that you want to say, a comment or a question, if you drop me a super chat, that gets pushed to my screen immediately, and so I'll be able to see that without having to scroll through and kind of you know decide and, de- and decipher what that is. So um, you can drop a super chat by using that uh, icon next to the emojis. Um, any super chat donations go to funding the production of this channel. So you're really supporting the channel in ways that. Um, that enable me to bring you the content that I want to bring you um, without having to take so much of a financial burden. You know, I do, my YouTube channel is not, this is not my full-time source of income. This is really a passion project to allow me to connect with you around the world and around North America and other like-minded goalies and to help you, you know, maybe in some small way. And so, uh, I don't do this for money. I don't do this as my full-time job. I have a whole other career aside from being a goalie YouTuber, as kind of ridiculous as that sounds. Um, so any donations you make via Super Chat go right back into the production value of this channel. So um, let me see. There was another question. There was another comment up here. Uh, Smithers Storm Tendy, hashtag lucky. 
uh, what if you trip someone and you don't get a penalty and someone says you're lucky? <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, you know, it's funny because that's like that's an that's another example of an error or a mistake on someone else's part. Right. But in this case, it might be the it might be the ref's part or the linesman part um, where they don't catch where they don't catch that. Uh In scenarios and situations like that, I might say that you keep you keep going in that trajectory and your luck will eventually run out, right? You will get caught eventually and um and put yourself put your team down in a short handed position. So um yeah, but yeah, but totally good point, man. Um so yeah, thank you so much. Let's see, there's oh oh man, there are so many um there's so many uh, great, great, great comments in here. Uh, Raymond M says, luck is hard work meeting opportunity, but I don't have any, um, but I do have my demons. I just, uh, I just wish they would play defense for me. Yeah, totally. Luck is hard work meeting opportunity. That's a good way. That's a good way to look at it, Raymond. You know, you, um, you do the things in your game off ice, practicing mental visualization, right? In different situations, to um to do those things when the opportunity arises to take advantage of them to put yourself to position yourself in the best way that you can on any different scenario um so let's see there are some other oh, there's so many great there's so many great comments in here uh let me just get let me just say hey to everyone that's here there are like 30 30 people in the chat and i am just super excited that you've been able to take a little bit of time out on a random what's today's today Tuesday today's Tuesday on a random Tuesday if you're like me so I'll tell you I'll, let me tell you a little story about uh, days of the week I used to be able to track days of the week by the night that I would play hockey which for me was generally Tuesday nights and then working from home made that even more difficult right because I'm home every day in the same environment and uh now that virtually everybody is at home and no one is going anywhere and there's no hockey, there's no nothing going on, um, it's super easy to lose track of the days, right? I mean, yeah, I, I know you guys are all feeling the same way. Like, what's today? I don't even know. I I don't have a, a game to look forward to. I don't know, you know, the NHL schedule is out the window. I don't know how many of you guys have your favorite team schedule in your personal calendar so you know when when that's going on um but yeah it's almost like the no man it's almost like no man's land and so when i decided to uh when i decided to start live streaming daily at least for the time being i don't and i honestly don't know how long i'm going to go um in terms of days i was thinking maybe i would just live stream daily for one week try to get a produced video out for this thursday um, because I, you know, I do have a little bit of extra time on my hands, uh, but I wanted to spend that, you know, live with you and connecting and, and talking about some of the stuff that, I don't know, we just want to talk about, you know, we don't have that same kind of outlet for hockey and goalie and goalies in specific. I know that a lot of people out there in the hockey community are, are starting, starting and trying to put out more regular and daily content, um, but you know what? A lot of those guys just rip on us, right, as goalies. And they're putting out like, oh, let's put out highlight clips and this and that of everyone scoring and all this other stuff. And I think, man, where's the goalie love? In, where's the goalie love in the community, right? We uh, we are a strong community, too, that also miss hockey, but for a whole, a whole different bunch of different reasons. Um, so, oh, man, I you know, I'm so sorry. I've just totally lost lost my place in um, in this chat it just goes by way too quickly, uh, and I'm sorry if there are a bunch of people. Let me just see if there there are a whole bunch of names in here that I love seeing. Um, let's go Bruins. Of course, I am a big Bruins fan. So what's going on, man? Uh, Danny boy, Danny boy, Z Danny boy, Sander. What's going on? You're a new name that I don't recognize. So welcome. Uh, he has a question. What do you think about small versus big goaltenders? Well. Uh, if you're if you're new to my channel, you may not know this, but I am on that smaller goaltender side. I'm only five seven, and so um, what do I think about it? Well, I think uh, each goaltender brings something unique and individual to the game. Has their own sets of challenges and uh, excels in a bunch of different ways. 
if you're looking at um, if you're looking at the math when it comes to big goalies versus small goalies, yeah, the math is going to say big goalies take up more space than small goalies, right? But uh, it's in a game like goaltending, you know, in a game like hockey, with regards to goaltending, you as a smaller statured person, you can still do things to play bigger. Um, and one of the benefits, you know, when you look at the the math around sizes, right? If I think if someone did a someone did a breakdown maybe a couple of years ago, the available area of a person of a goalie who's six foot five in their five hole specifically versus the available area in a goalie who is, you know, five foot seven, mathematically, that area is obviously smaller in a smaller stature goalie, but also the ability to shut that shut that space down is quicker, right? So as goalies, I, I'm pretty sure mathematically you're able to close up certain holes much faster just because of your compactness. And so using that to your advantage is one of the ways that um, that I think we can gain. And, and also our speed, right? Our ability to get certain places faster, be a little more explosive, close down those holes, um, and use our size or lack thereof to our advantage. So, you know, I think there, there, are good, there are goods and bads. I think what really it boils down to is that the trend is to look at professional sports and to look at the NHL. And because the trend has been bigger is better in terms of being uh, six foot one or two or taller, um, that ultimately that trickle down effect that the NHL has on every other league below it um, is there and is real. And then you look at guys like Yaro Halak or Saros, and they're having success. Um, and yeah, you think, okay, well, maybe that's maybe that's not the case. But it's tough because I think in today's NHL game, they are looked at as the exception, not the rule. And so there are, are lots of guys coming up through the system who might be shorter in stature that just don't get that just don't get the chance, that just don't get the shot. That um, that yeah is unfortunate because they're they're good goalies. But the reality is is that there are only a finite amount of NHL positions when it comes to goalies, right? There are only a finite amount of jobs. So the likeliness that anyone, regardless of your size and your skill and your ability, makes it to the show is low. Um, but what you can do is is just play. You know, I don't want to say this about all big goalies, but I, as a generalization, I feel that some of them may rely too much on their size. And so the best way, if you are a smaller goalie to compete with them is to work hard and focus on your own game and doing the things that you can do personally to, to have success and not worry about what other guys are doing and worry about the work and the effort and the heart and the training that you put in your own game to really do the things that you need to do. Um, and that really goes, you know, that goes for everything in life, right? You you focus on the things that you can control, just like luck. If you can't control luck, focus on the things that you can control. Um, so so hopefully that's my long-winded spiel about uh, size. If you're really into it, you can look, you can watch my video, um, Myth Busting, Does Size Matter?, I'll put it up, uh, one of these things, if you're watching another replay. And I am actually hoping to do, once once all the rinks reopen, I'm hoping to uh, do a follow-up video on that in a little bit more uh, of an in-depth way. Um, I know that a lot of you, thank you so much for all of you who have been with this channel for the last th two years while I've been putting out content. Um, it's, been, it's, it's been so awesome to think that when I hear comments of people like, oh, I was here, I was like subscriber 100. I was here when your channel was like this this size. I was here when your channel was this size. I was here when you reached this milestone. And um, the fact that the fact that this channel is about to eclipse 10,000 subscribers literally just blows my mind away. I didn't, I never thought that the reach, my reach would ever extend this far, that I would be able to connect and really have meaningful relationships with so many of you out there. I mean, it's just been, it's been totally awesome. And so thank you so much for all of you who have supported this channel over the last couple of years. And one of the fun things that I want to do is to go back into my library of content, find the videos that I 
that I did early on that I think to myself now, oh man, I've learned so much about everything, goaltending and video production and producing content now that I want to make these videos again, but like a hundred times better. And so one of those is that is that floating tea glove relacing video. I was never happy with how that one turned out specifically because I was rushing it and uh, didn't have, I don't know, didn't have a good, didn't know what I was doing, honestly. And so I am in the process of remaking that video. And so, yeah, hopefully that, that comes out soon. So uh, let's get back in the chat here. Um, Eric Almeida, what's going on, man? How are you? Uh, we are the last line of defense and the most criticized position being away from the puck and square and some luck. Um, yeah, it, all of those things are, are, are totally true. Uh, let's see some other comments in here. Uh, Taylor Pruitt, what's up, Wayne? Love the 90s goalie discussion from yesterday. Yeah, keep it up, man. Enjoying this. Thank you so much, uh, Taylor. I'm so glad. It's, you're, uh, you are one of the names that I don't recognize. So welcome if you're new to the channel. Um, or if you're a lurker out there and you're just been hanging around and um, haven't commented or, or participated in the chat, like, totally don't worry about it. It's okay. Uh, you don't all have to be vocal, but know that I appreciate you. Um, and thank you so much for, for, uh, for the kind words about yesterday's discussion. One of the things that I've been doing is trying to mix up the topics of these live streams, right? So that they appeal to a wide, broad audience and know that not everyone is going to want to, or have the ability to hang out with me when these actually happen or, you know, have interest in any of these topics. Um, at any given time. And so, yeah, I, you know, wanted to try different things. I wanted to like be a, ga a, a gamer and stream a video game, which in fact was probably one of uh, the most, I, I, I love all these live streams. And I've said that in one of, you know, recently yesterday, or the day before, um, but the gaming session that I did, if you, if you haven't seen that, go back and check that out. I play old school uh, Nintendo ice hockey was in my mind, one of the more thrilling live streams in so much that I thought to myself when I started it, do I really want to do this because I don't know how the end outcome is going to be? I could get blown out by the computer in an old school video game. And, and would how would that be? How would that look? And then I thought, you know what? Forget about it, man. I'm just going to go out there, have some fun. And that's what this is all about. That's what this channel is all about. That's what goaltending is all about. Getting out there, having some fun, doing the things you want to be doing and not worrying about the end result focusing on the moment, focusing on, on what you can take action on, what you have control over. And, um, and yeah, really that's all it should be about. So thank you so much. Hockey, hockey sniper, uh, Z says you should have 1 million su plus subs. Dude, thank you so much. I, you know, I'll tell you a secret. I don't think of myself as a YouTuber. I don't think of myself as an influencer. I don't think of myself as any of that, any of that stuff. Um, I just think of myself as a dude who loves hockey, goaltending in specific, wants to connect with you and wants to affect some kind of positive change in the position, in the culture of hockey, in the way goaltenders are perceived, in the way we treat each other. And part of that is to do things like this, have have a place where we can connect and, and join up and hang out and talk about all of the, you know, minutia and nerdy things about hockey and goaltending that we all love and give us a safe place to do that and to give a place for one of the important things is to give a place to newbies right to give a place to provide a place for new goaltenders people that are just starting to take up the position whether you are a youth hockey player a teenager an adult someone in someone older uh, if you have started playing hockey started being a goalie there are so many questions, right? We all start at some place. And unfortunately, you know, the way that the online culture is, is if you're new, it's, it's a hard entry point. It's hard to, um, it's hard to understand the lingo, the language, understand the nuances of equipment. Um, my buddy, Mark, who just recently connected with me on Instagram, you know who you are, you have a son and you have started to play hockey in an effort to learn the position and, and, um, work with him. Right. And, uh, you sent me, I'm sorry, I'm still catching up on all of my Instagram, um, direct messages and, and contact with that. And by the way, if you're not already following me, following me on Instagram, you should at VO goalie, because Instagram is the best way for you and I to connect on a, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And if you drop me a direct message, I will 
hopefully within a week, be able to reply to you with a custom voice message directly to you to answer any questions or comments or, you know, anything that you might have that you want to connect with me with. Um, unfortunately, sometimes I don't have the capacity to continue extended conversations via DM and on Instagram, but I will always reply to your initial email or um, message. So if you want to do that, do with, uh, connect with me on Instagram at Viogoli and um, I try to post some fun stuff every now and the, every now and then. But um, yeah, Mark is one of those new goalies that I'm talking about. He connected with me on Instagram. He told me his story. He recently scored a new set of equipment. I don't, um, Mark. I don't even know if you're in here. You, I think you were in here a couple of, a couple of, uh, oh my gosh, a couple of, uh, maybe live streams ago. But he posted on a Facebook group that I'm a member of, and um, you know, posted some. Uh, uh, some inaccuracies when it comes to how we refer to certain things like equipment. I think, you know, he, he, because he's new and fortunately, I think the, the members of this group were more kind than not in trying to tell him, Oh, Hey man. Uh, yeah, this piece of equipment is really called this. Um, but that's what it's all about, right? Being, uh, being a positive force and, helping each other out and especially in a time of crisis like we're all what like we are all living through right now right we're all coming together as a as a global community and one of my inherent core values of this channel and me doing what I'm doing is to create that global community for us as goalies where we have you know once you strap on the pads once you get out there once you make your first save we are all connected in ways that a large portion of the hockey community can't say. And so for us to just come and hang out, I've been, I've been using my goalie hashtag goalie BFF um, in all of my social media outlets because I truly believe that that's what every single one of you are. Like, I don't think of you as like, oh my gosh, I have 10,000 subs. I legit think I have 10,000 people who watch my videos that I could at any given time, have an awesome conversation about hockey and goaltending. And you know this because I come to these live streams and I uh, am willing to rant and ramble about hockey and goaltending for like an hour on end ad nauseum. And so, but really, you know, it's not this, this stuff isn't about me. It's really, it's really about you. And so let me try to get back and, um, and, and see if I can, oh, just even jump into, into this chat and see who else is in here. Um, say hi to a couple people, take a couple more questions. <sighs> see, this is the problem. I'll, I'll be honest with you right now, right? This is the problem I have. Um, I'm just checking my time here with the live streams is I, uh, I go on a little tangent about something awesome about goaltending and then I miss out on hanging out and um, and having an awesome conversation with all of you in real time. So um, maybe one of the one of the um, live streams I'll do at the toward the end of this live stream daily run is uh, like just a straight up fan interaction conversation, hang out in the chat, um, hang out in the chat type of uh, type of live stream. And I'm such a jerk because I just realized that I had my chat window all messed up and I wasn't even, I was, I was, I don't know. I was being fed like the top chat, which I don't really know what that, what that means. So, um, let's see a couple other things, a couple of the lucky, uh, hashtags in here. Um, da, da, da. Daniel says, Oh, you can also, you can also say that luck is a way to you motivate, uh, a way to you motivate use you, us. Um, my goalie coach was, correcting something in my game and I made a few saves uh which he dubbed lucky it might motivate me to prove him wrong yeah definitely it definitely could um the goalie guy says lucky hey I always make uh hey I always make like goalie saves and my pop which doubles as my goalie coach says stuff like you can't rely on luck to make all your saves and so I, and so I get mad. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, uh, it's yeah, it's it's hard when people say you got lucky when you think to yourself, you know what? No, I didn't get lucky. I did exactly what I needed to do to make that save. Right? It's just like in the Matrix, um, like the Oracle tells Neo exactly what he needs to hear, 
you're you're making saves exactly the need the, the way you make them um and that you need to make them at that time so uh, let's see a couple let me see if there are a couple other oh man there's so many names in here and so many people in here that i'm just super excited to see uh Here's a guy that I don't know. Big guy goalie. What's going on, man? How are you? Hashtag lucky. I'm still playing hockey this season because the rink we use is privately owned, but I only have two more games of the season. Well, uh, definitely when we're talking about lucky, yeah, if you're still playing hockey right now, you could be considered to be a lucky goalie. So I'll, I'll totally give you that. Uh, big guy goalie. Enjoy the games. Enjoy the last couple of games while you can. And um, know that all of us are... Uh, a little jealous that we're all not playing right now. But you know what? If you're not playing currently, there are still a couple things you can do. Um, hopefully, you have all seen my video from last Thursday. If you haven't, go back and check that out. I talk about three things that I was planning on doing and I am planning on doing during this break in um, in the hockey season and in all of our playing. And so check check out that video. That's a good one. And it's been um, people have been saying, oh, man, this is exactly what I needed to hear. So uh yeah thank you so much uh let's see a couple other a couple other um questions and comments in here uh that i want to get to uh man there you guys are just so awesome and hanging out you know i never think that when i first started doing live streams i thought to myself man if i get like i don't know 10 people to hang out with me i will be uh i'll be happy to hang out with with 10 people and then I see like all of these people from all over the place. Like, um, here's a name I'm going to butcher, but, uh, Mate Kudoba, Mate Kuba. Hey, from Czech Republic. What's going on to think that someone over in the Czech Republic is watching my channel, hanging out with us, you know, maybe, maybe goaltending is the universal language that we as hockey players need, right? That transcends language and barriers and and all those things because we know that when we stop a puck we stop a puck and and that's the bottom line um because stone cold said so oh man i that's that's such a bad that's such a bad one day late reference to um to my love of wrestling so that's a little insight for you that yeah uh Vio goalie was a big wrestling fan back in the 90s because, yeah, Austin 316. 316 was yesterday. I'm just a day late, right? And a buck short. Um, so uh, there are... Let me just get to a few more questions and comments. Um, uh, the Jason Six says, Dude, that was the same reason I wanted to become a goalie. My four-year-old loves playing around the house. And I wanted to be able to give him someone to practice against. Yeah, that's that's a that's a great reason to, to strap on the pads. I know that... Um, I know that that motivates a lot of us, right, to get out there or to come back to the sport after taking a after taking a break, right? We used to play hockey, we used to be goalies, and then as you get older, you know, life gets in the way. Um, you start families or whatever it is, you change jobs, and you kind of fall out of the sport. And then something, anything, somehow hooks you hooks you back. And um, in speaking of that. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to a small YouTube channel that I recently found that is exactly this, that embodies the spirit of kind of what my channel is all about. And um, that is a guy named Roger. He has a hockey goalie YouTube channel called Roger Plays. And he played, he was in the chat, uh, he made a comment in my video yesterday. So if you go back and watch the live stream in the comment section, he, he made a comment so you can find his channel immediately but his, his channel is called Roger plays hockey I think and he was a he was a big hockey goalie back in the early 90s and then kind of fell away from the game and is chronicling vlogging his journey back and I just want to give him a big shout out because he um, his story is inspirational to me he's right now training on getting back on the ice um, he's a big Hurricanes fan check out his channel, throw him some love and encouragement. The guy is doing it the right way. He's putting in a lot of work. And, um, you know, I, I saw, I found his channel and I feel compelled to be like, you know what, this guy deserves, deserves a couple more views, deserves some more fans. He's on the road. I want to see him make his way back. Uh, and yeah, so give him some love. Roger plays hockey. Check him out on, on his channel. Maybe I'll, in, in hindsight, I'll throw a link to it, uh, down in the description below. Um, so, oh man, you guys are so awesome. 
Uh, yeah, Cooper Goalie, what's going on, dude? How are you? Good to see you in here. Uh, if you make the types of saves that I made, if you make the type of save more than once, it's not lucky. There you go. Uh, I hear you. I hear you, bro. Um, and I'm, oh, dude, I'm totally sorry you made, you missed the 90s goalie talk yesterday. Ah, uh, I've been trying to do, like I said, I've been trying to stagger these so as many people can participate and hang out, um, as I, as, as I can get. Um, so dude, I'm totally sorry you missed that one. Uh, let's see some other, some other good questions in here. Um, oh man, you know, I get a lot of questions. Damien, Damien W788 asks a question about sizing and I get a lot of questions about, um, size recommendations and, and this and that. So maybe I will do a dedicated video or live stream on kind of sizing best practices, right? I mean, I'm not, I don't work for any goalie company, goalie retailer, goalie manufacturer. And so all of my sizing tips and tricks I've learned one from just wearing different equipment and figuring out what it is that I like in terms of my own play. Um, but then you know, whatever the manufacturers uh, put out for their sizing recommendation charts on their websites, that's probably the best way to to go with regards to um, figuring out your size in general. But if you are of an in-between size and could go either way, like say you are my frame and you could wear like a small chest and arm or you could wear a medium chest and arm, or I mean, or you could wear a large chest and arm. It really depends on kind of how you see that piece of equipment fitting into your game and play and style. And so if you are on the fence between a bigger size and a smaller size, you can take into consideration things like mobility and or blocking space. And so if you value things like mobility and your and your ability to move around, you might want to go on that smaller side. If you are looking to take up more space, you might want to jump to that bigger side. If you are in between two kinds of, of sizes, but that's really just like, you know, a general, uh, a general piece of advice. Um, oh my goodness, you guys, we are, we are approaching, I don't know, one hour. So I'm going to still hang out with you. Uh, I have the benefit today of already doing most of my work for the day in the morning. And so I have a little bit of extra time. So we'll see, we'll see how um, we can go. Ryan A, yeah, man. Wayne is my is my goalie Morpheus, dude. Uh I there's there's almost no greater compliment, right? To be to be compared to the great Morpheus. Um I don't know about you guys, but I am super excited about any Matrix uh Matrix movies that are gonna come out in the future, reboots, because the Matrix for me was one of those definitive movies in the nineties that I was like, man, this is like this is what I want movies to be like. And in fact, I don't know if you've gone back. The first original Matrix, just to go on a side tangent because I love the Matrix so much, right? Um, the original Matrix was rated R for violence. And then I recently watched it with my 12-year-old. Um, and it wasn't actually all that violent. So maybe you've, if you haven't, you have some time. Aside from watching like hockey movies and other hockey content, yeah, go back and watch the Matrix. That's a good, that's a good one. But I will say uh, in my copious free time, I also tried to watch, go back and watch the TV show Lost, and I made it through the pilot episode, and then I thought to myself, man, I don't know if I have to actually do this. So I'll save you guys some time. Don't go back and watch Lost. It was great in the day, um, but then it kind of got all convoluted over the season. So anyways, ba so back to hockey. Um, so <laughs> a couple other a couple other things. Um, it's so hard, you know, these, these live streams are tough for me because I start them at a certain time and I, you know, recognize that not everyone has the time and capacity and ability to hang out with me for the duration. And so people come and go as, you know, as I keep going and, um, and, and then people join like around this time. And I think to myself, oh man, I don't want to stop the stream because there are so many, I want to, I want to connect with you. I want to connect with all of you out there. And so you it's so it's like oh I don't ever want to stop I just want to keep going but it gets to be to the point where um there's only so much that we can that I can do in one in one in one sitting so uh but a couple of the names that have that have come in here towards the end uh Keith Blanchard what's going up man how are you WLS what's up well how are you man um sorry uh there's another name in here that I that was new 
Michael Pacini, hey, what's going on? How are you? He says, hey, Wayne. Um, ah, <laughs> uh, geez. There are just so, uh, so many awesome viewers that I feel like I want to connect with in a, in a one-on-one person, uh, in a one-on-one way, like, uh, Riley Hayden. Hello. What's up? Your name I don't recognize. And so it's so, it's so hard because then I see things like, oh, Scout, Scout the Dog is back. Scout the Dog was one of the viewers who was here early before I started, had to bounce and then maybe came back. Um, Papa Smurfette, what's going on, dude? How are you? You've been, you've been all over the place. And I think you've maybe sent me a message on, on Instagram, which I will get back to you, um, shortly. And so, uh, yeah, it's great to see, it's great to see all of these new names and old names, um, come together and, uh, yeah, just, I don't know, just be awesome. You guys are all awesome. Um, let's see a couple other, a couple other questions. Uh, Jerry Phillips says not a superstitious bone in this tender's body. Yeah. If you, uh, I don't, I don't consider myself a, a superstitious person anymore either. And if you want, you can go back and watch my watch my video on rituals and superstitions and kind of how I break down my perspective and thoughts about superstitions, rituals, and routines and how I think that they can be beneficial to your game and detrimental to your game at the same time. Um, so yeah, uh, dude, thank you so much for joining, for joining the stream. Uh, here's one. Jacob, uh, let's see. Jacob D. Lawson. Jacob D. Lawson says, if you were new to goalie, would it be okay to get used pads instead of brand new pads? Somewhat inexpensive. Yeah, dude, it's totally okay. If you are new to goalie, if you are a new goalie, if you're new to the position, if you're just starting something, I always will advise you to get used equipment that you can afford that within, that is within your budget range to get started, right? One of the reasons being, and I've said this before, is that as a new goalie, you don't know kind of what your personal preferences are when it comes to how equipment fits, how equipment performs, what you really need to optimize your game, because honestly, you don't have a game yet. And so the best thing you can do is scrounge up some equipment you can find, get on the ice, get a sense of work on your skating, get a sense of your movement, and then start to tailor your equipment preferences and purchases in the future based upon your experience and know that you know it could take a season two seasons three years five years 10 years 20 years before you actually dial in exactly what you like right um speaking from experience like my latest set of, of equipment my warrior g4s are probably my favorite set of equipment i've ever worn but that took me i don't know like 15 years to figure it out to finally for them to make them and finally me to figure out that oh yeah this is the kind of equipment that performs best for me the sizing that i that i like best um so yeah the most important part grab some stuff get out there uh make some saves and then figure out kind of what it is that your equipment um will will where will take you and then what you can do is if you're still working on a budget times like these right now are the best time of year to find good deals on new gear because manufacturers and retailers are putting out this the the new lines for 2020 so every line before this 2019's model pads pads from 2018 2017 that are still kicking around stores are being um sold at a extreme discount and clearance price so if you're looking for new gear about now is the time to look, um, about now is the time to, to score some great deals. Um, but yeah, it's definitely cool to find used gears, uh, used gear. I would recommend though, uh, that you invest in a good mask because that will be your most important piece of equipment protection wise. Um, and invest in properly fitting skates because that will help you, that will help you develop your game faster. Um, than any other equipment, your ability to skate, move, recover, and, uh, and things like that. And so, um, oh guys, thank you so much. It is, all right, so it's six, it's six, it's been 60 minutes. I'm going to have to stop today's stream, but guys, thank you so much. Again, uh, if you are looking to, if you're watching this in the replay, the best way to catch a stream live 
in person in real time is to subscribe, click that notifications bell um, so that you get notified when I stream. I'm trying to do these at various times of day so that as many people can participate over this week as I can. Uh, if you have a comment or question or suggestion for what you'd like to, uh, a live stream to be about, drop it in the comments below. I read every comment. I these days don't necessarily have the time to reply to everyone, but I do my best. I do read all the comments. Um, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you have a great Tuesday. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. And remember, you are totally awesome. Have a great day, guys.